Tomorrow night, David Lee is going to be here. So how do people know you? If you've ever seen him, he's amazing. I think Bobby Hollis, Jeff Barnes, Travis Powell, uh, uh, Austin Irby, Russ Howe, Jack uh, Curtis uh, came by. Jack Curtis, of course, is from Tupelo. He was going to join us, had to take care of some personal business. He'll be by later tonight, 7 to 10, Charlie's Ice House. We're going to be doing some more celebrating. And I just want to thank those guys for coming to sing all day today. That's right. Everyone. We've had music all day long, Elvis music all day long, which is only fitting that we are lighting up the uh, atmosphere here. Yes. With, uh, you know, I, I, I so appreciated uh, what they did this morning at, at, at Graceland and, uh, the, you know, the proclamation and the presentation at Graceland. But you know what? Everybody, they should have been here. This yeah, is the, this is know. where it started. And I'm glad you're here. Got one more phone call. Did I miss anybody? Does anybody out there have their an Elvis story of an encounter with Elvis? I mean, we've got a person who saw him 60 times in concert. We got we've got back uh, time. right back here. Let's go back. Coming to you. Coming to you. Good to see you again. Tell everybody your name. Jackie Parker. Jackie, what what's your connection with Elvis? Well, I knew Elvis when he lived here in East Tupelo, and I knew him when he lived in South Tupelo, and I knew him when he lived up in the black neighborhood. I have several stories about instances where I passed across, but I have one in particular I think you would probably be interested in more than any of them. During the Second World War, things you couldn't get, like metal, new bicycles was one of them. If you had an old bicycle, you better take good care of it because you couldn't get TV tires. Well, I saved money and finally, after about three years, got enough money to buy a bicycle. And uh, Mr. Dodge, who's over the foundation here, Dad had a service station by the his diner here in Tupelo called Philip Phillips, and they sold bicycles. I bought a bicycle from him that had a basket on the front, basket on the back, had a lever you could pull up, turn the lights on it, one pull up, make a siren. And I was at my own school, I was in the seventh grade when Elvis was in the sixth grade. He spied my bicycle and wanted to ride it, and I let him ride it that day and several other days after. But the first time he rode it, he tried to trade his guitar to me for my bicycle. <laughs> and uh, I didn't trade with him because uh, I knew what would wind up is he would have the best looking bicycle in Tupelo, and I'd have a guitar I couldn't play and they would be able to play. <laughs> it cost $28, and that was a lot of money during that time. People was working for a dollar a day if they had a good job. 75 cents for the medium, and my mother was working at hotel cheap for over 6 cents an hour as a waitress. I know. Uh, I, I got this money selling scrap iron, and I ain't gonna tell you how many coat hangers I sold to uh, the uh, dry cleaners during the war. If you carried something to get dry cleaners, uh, you had to carry a coat hanger, it would be folded. And I found out about the shortage, and I'd go from door to door and ask people for coat hangers, and I got 3 cents a piece for them. That was pretty good. I, a lot of days I get 20 or 30, and that's where I got a lot of money to buy that bicycle. And uh, like I say, I don't know what would happen if they ever said trade you with me, but I know I don't know what happened to me. I said, <laughs> I have a guitar I couldn't play. Thank you so much, Mr. Prather. And break the string again. That's so crazy. Might, you know, if he had traded for that guitar, this might we wouldn't be here. This this whole thing might be him. <laughs>